Beyond Belmore podcast number three with, I reckon this is going to be the best one. There's no offence to the other boys that have come on, but I am very, very excited. I'll apologise to everyone for my voice. Uh, I've just come back from Magic Round, and it's fair to say I'm never going again. But, uh, Reedy, how Hello, are you, Josh. Mate? How are you, mate? I'm very excited for this one, man. Look, I've got, this is the most notes I've ever had, because I just, I love you. <laughs> so, mate, um... Talk to us, man. Yeah, you, you know your childhood, growing up in Queensland. Um, did you did you always love footy? Yeah, I did. I um, I footy was probably all I ever knew growing up as a kid. Um, you know, family brothers all played it, and um, you know, as far as I can remember, I think Mum's got a video of me when I was like four years old, um, tackling a bag at, at my brother's footy training, and that. And I think Mum was saying um, as soon as I you know, left the hospital, I went straight to a, my, my brother's footy game. So um, it's pretty much all i ever known, really. And um, as you do, you just play because your brothers play it and sort of went from there. And but yeah, obviously growing up in Queensland and stuff like that, um, you know, I loved where I lived and pretty pretty lucky my how I was gr- growing up from, with my family. And um, yeah, it's obviously good memories back then. Do you feel... Um in Queensland, because it's so rugby league uh, dominated, that you you sort of like pretty much definitely play. Like, is there many kids yeah, going to know. school or I stuff don't... that play soccer or oh, AFL or? Like, I would say majority ninety percent mm. of kids in my grade or at school, primary school, high school, all played rugby. So um, you get the handful that do other things, but it was pretty much just all footy. That's all everyone ever mm. did. So. Pretty much all my mates that I went to school with in class with, we all played in the same footy team. So yeah, man, uh, which was mad, and still got heaps of close mates that played footy with back then. But yeah, pretty much just in Queensland, like a little bit in the countryside. That's all everyone really did. Every Saturday, Sunday was just footy. It's mad. You speak about your family, mate. Uh, do you want to just sort of let everyone know, uh, brothers, sisters, um, your relationship with all them, and your mum and, and dad? Yeah, I got whatnot. got two older brothers, uh, two absolute madmen. Um, <laughs> Younger sister, um, she lives in Sydney now, which is cool. Um, but yeah, we just, you know, when we were growing up, we lived on 100 acres and um, just pretty much just like rode motorbikes together. And uh, we used to actually, like dad you have, used to have a mate where like, we had heaps of obviously land and we just would ride our motorbikes around and he'd he'd bring, um, he'd know this guy, like a panel beater guy, that cars that can't be put back on the road and he'd pay like 200 bucks for a car. Yeah, wow. So then like, he'd, he'd just drop them off and we'd just drive them around and just like flog them and then they'd blow up and they'd come <laughs> yes. pick them up. It was mad. So yeah, that's pretty much what we did as kids. But yeah, pretty close with all my family, which is mad. You say your two brothers are mad. Question, are they madder than you or not as mad? <laughs> I'd like to say they're madder. <laughs> to be honest, yeah, they're pretty mad. I love that. But it, that's what, um, well, I suppose eventually when I have kids and stuff, that's what I, I, I want. I want my kids to be out on... Land on bikes and yeah, it's causing mad. havoc, so good, you know, not being on, on yeah. the laptops. And yeah. I, I feel that's, um, you know, growing up like that, you probably not, you don't have a choice, but you'd rather be out there exploring and yeah, it's, with your brothers. And, I feel obviously different now with phones and iPads and that. Obviously, back then, I, mean, I feel old saying this, but like back then in the days, like <laughs> I don't think there was ever like that stuff around. I never was like a PlayStation guy, um, but yeah, it was pretty good just to do, run amok on the farm. Yeah, man. So, mate, you, with the footy, you started off at these uh, the Kiwana Dolphins first? Nah, so uh, BY Bulldogs. BY, I was, I was... So I was there, um, that was like my local team. Mm-hmm. Um, lived in Lands about five minutes away and then played there till I was, I think, 14, I think. And, you know, we were actually going all right. Like, it was all my mates I went to high school with. They were all playing the same team. And it was like we were in that in-between where we'd be too good for, like, B grade, but then go to A grade and get flogged. So mm. I was like, far out. And, you know, my other mates that I played a little bit of rep footy when, when I was a kid, um, we like, we'd, we'd, they'd always try and call me to come to go to Kiwana and just uh. kept saying, no, no, no. You know, and half an hour drive, mum and dad are working. It's pretty, pretty tough. Um, and then one day, like just, there wasn't, a, there wasn't enough players. So I thought, you know, it's weird to think back then, like 14 years old, I'm like, well, if I don't do anything now... <laughs> I could be and not play, so I decided to try and test myself, and I went and played up at Kiwana and played like three or four years there, which was pretty good. So, um, but yeah, I loved both the clubs there. 
They're what did, what did they offer you, like red frogs or something to come across? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No, I was, yeah, I don't know. It was just more of like opportunity, I think. Mm. I was sort of in that um, little period where like a few of my mates were so already signed with like clubs and that. I was 14. Like you're saying now, like if that was me again, I wouldn't stress about it. But when you're that age, you're like, fire out, bro. I need it. But I just always just like a new opportunity. They were playing A grade sort of thing. And I knew that like I should be playing it. Um, but I didn't want to leave my mates from school and that. Yeah, it's hard. So it was hard. So I was like, all my mates' ages were off me. Really? And to this day, they still give it to me for leaving. Oh, That's no really, way. Yeah, oh, yeah. I love that. Um, which is pretty funny. But oh, all for the better. But yeah, well, look, it's fair to say the deal was no, weren't nowhere near as much still as Still waiting on Red Frogs, though, from. <laughs> <laughs> from coming from Parrot to the dogs. But anyway, we'll speak about that later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm actually interested. How does it work up there? So we've obviously got um, SG Ball, Harold Matz, and whatnot. <laughs> um, yeah, how, how, do, how do you get into a, a system up in Queensland when you are, you know, 14, 15, 16, trying to, I suppose, make a name for yourself? Yeah, so you, um, they have, like, I think now that it's still Cyril Connell, Mel Meninga, which is Cyril Connell's 16s, mm -hmm. uh, Mel Meninga's 18s. Um, and obviously you've got, like, the Sunny Coast Falcons, which oversee the whole Sunny Coast. And you go through little, like, um, pre-season camps and stuff like that, and there's hundreds of kids that try out and stuff like that. And they slowly break it down over the summer. Um, okay. then, yeah, lucky enough to be able to play in that and sort of went from there and, um, then played 18s and yeah. So, so, but you, you come down to, uh, the docks. Yeah. So probably more school footy. I probably got more up there. Like I was you 15, like, 15, yeah, 15, you come down? Well, no, I was, uh, I would just turn like 17. And then that's so, when you come down. Yeah. So I was yeah. just finished school. Um, but yeah, I was really lucky. I, like, I think I was like 15 or 16. I signed like one of those, I don't know what you, uh, you like call a scholarship them. scholarship sort of thing? Yeah. Or? It was one of those things. Yeah, I'd, okay. I'd I come down, you might've been here actually. When were you, when were you here? 16? 15? Long, long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd come at like in my school holidays, I'd come down here for a week and we stay with, um, like Andy Patmore ran it. Oh yeah. And so did Andy Patmore scout you? Is that who, nah, who got you? I forgot who it was. Do you remember? Probably me, man. I just, I just said, go get that remember. kid. I <laughs> mean, um, I'd come down here in the school holidays. Oh, okay. And like, um, and then like for a week and train and like watch you guys train and we do our own sort of training and all that sort of stuff. And then, yeah, once I finished school, um, I didn't really have anything else anywhere. It was just like, and I, obviously at the time I was like, mum and dad were like, do you really want to do it? And I was mm. like, oh, I don't know why. So I thought about it and just, just said like, stuff it, I'm just going to do it. Mm. So I just moved down here, like just finished school and went to schoolies for a week and, you know, wow. set a last horizon with my mates yeah. and then, um, and then come back here like a week later and like no family, just on my own. Wow. So 17. Yeah. Little and I tell you, come from Queensland, small town into bank, uh, into Belmore. <laughs> Jeez, it was a rude yeah. shock. I tell you that. <laughs> mate, there's no land here. It's oh, just nah. duplexes and <laughs> sky, sky rises, mate. Oh, uh, but yeah. I so know obviously you're in schoolies. You're probably with your mates going, boys, I'm going to do it. A yeah. couple of sessions crying. <laughs> uh, but then did you, did you move, um, into the house? Yeah. So I moved, um, straight into Viv's house mm. and, um, I think at the time there was like maybe eight or nine of the boys living there. Okay. Who which, was which living boys? there? Which boys? I remember Adam Kieran was there. Okay. Um, a few other boys that um, were living there was pretty mad, but I was pretty tight with Adam Kieran at the time. Yeah. Um, but it was like full house. I think I was sharing a room with someone at the time. Oh. I was just like, can't even have my own space. And I'm like, nah. Many tears, many tears. Mm. Vid, Vid tells a good story actually about, I cried to her one day. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Pretty funny. I laugh at it now. It's actually a bit embarrassing, but um, she helped me make my, make my bed sheets and that. Oh. I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do this, eh? Like, it was like a weekend. And she oh, made my, wow. God bless her, I love her. Oh, man. Just, just a, just you a know. bit of baby Actually, I remember you turning up yeah. a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. Dropping up in your AMG. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's just Reynolds. I'm like, I love that guy. Is that Mike Lebanese too? <laughs> 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 oh, just for a bit of background. So Viv's, um, she runs the house. Uh, she... When people come down from Queensland, she looks after them. And I can honestly say. She's the best person. Like, she's literally the best person. I reckon she has made probably 20 careers just from, yeah. you know, bringing people down like yourself. Yeah. But just showing them, like, love. and Because it's hard, mate. Like, I, yeah. I never done it. But yeah. I was, funny story, I used to go there and just. So the boys would stay in your house, the yeah. Bulldogs house. But I'd stay at Viv's. 
<laughs> so I'd Did stay you? up there. Yeah, I just sat. But then they, the Bulldogs, like the people started saying like, mate, like you can't do that. It's only for people like that are from you Queensland. Or, and I'd and just be like, nah, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'll just go there and hang with the boys. But um, yeah, like a lovely lady. Oh, yeah, like, exactly on that, like, like it was probably, might have been, I was there for maybe four or five weeks. And this time I didn't have a car, nothing, no job. Um, and like I had like a little job at home. I was came down to do absolutely nothing. So you, there's a lot of time spent thinking. Mm. Um, and then one day she just, I remember vividly, she just goes like, if you want it, you'll, you'll push through the pain. Mm. And like I always tell her like. You've said that? Yeah. Oh man. God love her. She's the best. She's, yeah. I still go and see her now and. So I'm a second she texts me every mate. game. It's the best. <laughs> Almost like legit the same. So. She'd even go to the games and watch to support you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, she was, she's the best. And then have to deal with her own family and yeah, yeah. an amazing person. Yeah, she's and she's, uh, she yeah. probably doesn't get enough credit, I reckon, nah. like at the club, just because what she does. And yeah, yeah. We, we, it's we pretty cool. Now I went back there maybe not too long ago and they've got like, um, like a, what do you even call it? Like a picture or like a thing on the wall. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. And it has like every player that's lived there that's mm. got, it's made NRL. That's pretty cool. I think it's good for the boys that are living there because, mm. like, if we all sort of went through it, yeah. So it's it's a good little touch, eh? Yeah, it's absolutely, good. man. Some good <laughs> stories in them four walls. I tell you oh, oh, mate, <laughs> honestly, I reckon one day we I think we had a food fight in there, a proper food. Like I'm talking, well, I actually like, had a fight. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, hold on. <laughs> actually, you've been having a lot of fights lately, mate. <laughs> um, <clears throat> see, is it is this a porky? Yeah. I heard this, but did dogs get rid of you then because they thought you were too small? Oh. We can't remember now because someone actually told me that, but I, I don't <coughs> know if they'd G me up or not. I don't know if they just use that just to make an excuse. I uh. mean, they're not wrong. They're not wrong at all. It's <laughs> small. <laughs> well. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I was definitely thrown up there, but um, there was more sort of left on that age you like, you know, Toyota Cup back then was like, if you're playing that, you were like going pretty good. Mm. And I was like, I think I just maybe turned 18 and it wasn't, I played SG ball here and then I sort of went back and I played, I can't remember the team that they sent me back to play. It might've been like St. Christopher's or something. Oh, like you played club footy. Yeah. And oh, I was like, right. oh, I could be yeah. doing this back home, mate. Yeah. Like yeah. I sort of did spit the dummy a bit, and, which yeah. probably can't. As you do. But, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I could be playing this back home. Um, and then a week later, I was at 20s, like power of 20s. So yeah, happened pretty quick. Well, it's not about the size, is it, Reed? It's no. about the size of the dog. Yeah, you're right. They know now. They know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so talk to, talk to us about that. So you obviously didn't didn't happen here at the dogs, but did you go back home and to come back down to para? No, nah, it, was, it was like, you know, obviously finished SG ball, um, which is – 18s and then they sort of bring you up to 20s and I was training once a week under 20s and mm -hmm. um yeah well, no, I was doing absolutely nothing like it was there was not much going on and you know what fair fair them at the time they had other hookers that are a bit older and playing then I thought yeah sweet whatever and then just got a phone call from my like, power and that was saying would you come over here good opportunity I think uh, at the time Luke Burt was the coach um so I just went over there. I was 18. I thought, I'm going to give it a crack. And I ended up playing that year in 20s. Yep. So it was, it was all worth it in the in mm. a way. But yeah, I went straight there, pretty much moved all my stuff out one week and was there in, in two days oh, over wow. in the power house. Um, happened pretty quick. So all things happen for a reason, eh? Enjoy the game for what it is. You don't need to have a bet to cheer on your team. Reclaim the game. Be gamble aware. So 2017, 2018, are you playing, um, is it still under 20s then? Is that what it's called? Um, so 17, what was it? So I moved in here. So 16, I went over to to Para midway through the mm -hmm. year, like a halfway transfer mm -hmm. or whatever it was. Ended up playing like two games of under tw like Toyota Cup. Mm -hmm. And then 17, just played under 20s, like the whole year mm -hmm. at uh, Para 20s. We made the grand final that year. Got beat on the bell, oh. hurts. Two minutes to go, missed tackle, hurt. You missed Nah, tackle. not me, but <laughs> won't name names. <laughs> <laughs> name it, name it, name it, name it. <laughs> um, and then that that end of that year did a got um got up like I called up. I was at work, and um you know, it was like preseason. It wasn't even preseason. It was like because like I think first grade didn't make the eight, so they were 
they were going into like, um, like within two weeks into training for like preseason, and we just finished the season because like you finished on mm. that week that we played on the Sunday before the A grade grand final, and then like within I was at work just just cruising, and then I got a phone call saying you want to do preseason, no holidays, nothing, straight into you're not going to knock back a preseason, are you? Oh, absolutely. So just got given like six weeks before Christmas, and then just it was it was tough, man. <laughs> I struggled a bit. In first two weeks, I'm flying, thinking I'm, mm. you know, and then they, you just hit a wall, and oh, I was yeah. just on survival. I just got like <laughs> that. <laughs> so that was, so in it's 2018, you played cup as well. You got yeah. called up into cup. You played about five games. I yeah, think so, I, so it was, so I did the preseason mm -hmm. with, with Para, first grade. Yep. Um, and then uh, like the day before Christmas break up, Brad call, pulls me in and like, you're shitting yourself. Like, mm. oh, I don't know where this is going to go. And, um. Like, oh, I was thinking just train hard. That's what, mm. what Brad was like. And um, I thought I did that. And he goes, oh, I want, I want you to come back after Christmas. I was like, oh, yeah, man. gun. Mm. So he come back for a couple of weeks. And then like maybe midway through January, he's like, I want you to stay until the trials. And then I eventually got like upgraded to like a, like a development deal. So I was like full time from then on, which was pretty mad. And then um, I think because Kazar was one hooker mm. and Cam King. And like, I was just going to go back and play twenties and then one of the boys got injured or couldn't play that first game. So they went up to grade and then I played, played cup. Uh, it yep. was a funny year. It was, it was a strange year. So you, so that's it. That's that first round of 2018. Yeah. You yeah. got called up into cup. Yeah. Did you feel you were, did you feel you were slowly making headways into, you know, possibly making your debut? I felt like I was close, mm. um, without being like. Bit arrogant, but I was, no, like, no, oh, like, I was like, yeah, you have a feeling. I was like, no, nah, I can, uh, I reckon I can get there. Like it's close. Um, but then like, you know how it is, young bloke, you play cup one week, one of the other boys comes back mm. and you're playing twenties. Mm -hmm. So I reckon I went like cup, cup, twenties, cup, twenties, mm. like just back and forth all year. And then just kept trying to play good footy, I guess. And, <coughs> um, yeah. And that's when I debuted that middle way through the year. Yeah. So round 14. Man, 2018, yeah. beautiful Darwin. Oh, pick a better spot to de debut. Any, it was that hot. Well, I've actually got a better one. Canberra, Friday night, freezing cold in winter. That's oh, that's what I'm saying. But it? we've probably had two of the, the lowest debut spots in the world. And you watch on TV now, like, <laughs> like when the boy, uh, Power Boys played this year, I'm thinking, I don't miss that game at all. Like, it's, How it's, like, it's, it's, it's random, horrendous. Random question. We'll get back to your debut, but is it? The, every player, every team that I see go up there, they just look. They f you weathered. fall apart. You fall apart. It's like <laughs> Parrot did this. You year. know, like one year. So one year I played there. I thought I'm going to avoid being out in the sun. Like I'm going to avoid. <laughs> I'm going to stay indoors all day. <laughs> just drink water. I'm going to stay. Like I walk outside to go to the game, and it's like a ton of bricks just hit me. Bang! Get that in here. I was like, oh. just bunker in. <laughs> just I just didn't leave the house. I locked the, even though the curtains were down. No sun on me. No sun. And yeah. then the next time I was like, you know what? I'm going to actually lay in the sun all day and I'm just going to absorb it. Still didn't help. So how did it all come about, mate? Uh, week leading in, uh, did sort of Brad say to you, let you know early, was a late, a late pull oh, out or? I can't remember. I think maybe Kazo or something got injured. Mm -hmm. And then um, I remember I remember we were just, we were just in, the, um, in the video room. I had no idea, absolutely no idea. And he's told everyone in front of everyone. And I was like, yeah, sweet. I still remember like my first captain's run, um, like Brad was big on set starts, like knowing his set starts. And this time I had no idea. Like I just went and played footy. Eh? Like I mm. just go out there, like <clears throat> run a mark, get to first grade, completely different. Like there's set starts and all this. <laughs> and I remember one, one captain's run, I think it might've been the first one. Uh, I did it. We did it. We're practicing a tap and I sort of knew what I was doing, but I didn't. And it was like a block for block. And I just, I completely stuffed it up. Oh, no. He pulled me aside. He goes, you know what you're doing? I said, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're honest. And ever since then, ever since then, I've always made sure that I was, I knew what what was going on. That's probably just growing up mm. doing that sort of stuff. But <laughs> yeah, it was pretty, um, it was, it was pretty mad. Obviously like, that's all you ever dreamed of is playing first grade. Um, and all those things that we said before about like moving and, mm. um, you know, ending up playing St. Christmas or wherever I did to <laughs> going out to Para and, um, you know, living with the boys there and then training first grade and all that, and then getting to debut, which is, was pretty mad. Yeah. Um, 
and it was in Darwin, which didn't I didn't really care. I would have played on the road here to, to debut. Um, but yeah, sort of just went from there. It was like exciting for my family. Um, you know, they sacrifice as everyone says they do everything um, for you to be there. I remember it's like my mum and I think my mum and my mum and dad had because they had motorbikes. And I remember like you know. We went the wealthiest family in it. We had motorbikes and that, but we had to sell a motorbike for me to go to a carnival. Like, just things like that. Really? Yeah, yeah like, yeah. just to pay for me and pay for them to get there and just like that. It was, it was mad. So, um, do that for them. And obviously, the hard work that I that I did to get there was, was pretty cool. And, they're the yeah. little things, I suppose, you think of. Yeah. Um, selling the motorbike and stuff and, and your family because they're, so, um, they're so a part of the ride. Yeah. And when you do retire, eventually, mate, you'll... You just appreciate it so much more because they are, they got you to, they make you who you are. Yeah. Really, from a young age. I mean, you know? they do your head in, but. Yeah. <laughs> oh, mate. <laughs> Have you met my brother? My God. <laughs> yeah, I've actually. <laughs> Many times. <laughs> oh, well, if it makes you feel any better as well, I was a half and I never knew any set start for 13 years I played, so. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Let's take some time to reflect here. Hasn't sideline conversion in 2002. Trent Hodkinson's field goal in 2014. Thrifty becoming the Bulldogs' official car rental sponsor in 2023. Some of the greatest moments in Bulldogs history. Which one is best? Bulldogs fans can score 15% off the base rate of day with Thrifty. For the best deals on car rentals, visit www.thrifty.com.au slash Bulldogs. Mate, so we were just speaking about your, your debut. Um, I've got a question for you. So you obviously base your game on um, a lot of the, you know, the one... The one percenters. Mm. You actually, I know it's a bit of a cliche, but you do. You know, you kick chase, uh, you kick pressure uh, is second to none. Did you find those things harder to do in the NRL because of the speed of the game? It was, you know, when, like when you're playing cupper and all that, everyone sort of just looks at you and goes, oh, he scored this try, he did that, mm. he made one big tackle. Mm -hmm. But then when you start playing first grade, it's, it's not, it is about that, but it's not. No. That's all about the little one percenters is what keeps you in the team and what the coach is driving. Um, and that's how I just sort of based my game around. Like I, and sort of how I train was like I train hard, um, like I'll go till I drop sort of thing. And mm -hmm. that's how I sort of based my game around for, you know, since I've been playing. And, you know, you get into, into grade and stuff and that's what the things that I highlight is, is those little things that, you know, the crowd don't see, the people on the TV don't see, the commentators don't see. But like... The people in the four wars, they're doing video. That's what we we mm. see. Um, and yeah, I've just and that's and I've done it really well. And that's what I'm good at. And all the other stuff that I do that might look good just comes off the back of me doing that. Um, and it, you know, it takes you it takes you a while to actually to realize that what's work what what works best for you. Mm. It might have taken me. I reckon it would have taken me 50, 60 games. I reckon until you know like your role in a way. Um, <coughs> but yeah, those little things is is how I. How I get myself in the game, and at the end of the day, it's what's best for the team. Um, mm. It's actually um, crazy how, you know, I think when you're young, um, you just think, oh, I've got to set up tries, yep. score tries, yep. do big hits, yeah. run over someone. Um, but then, especially here at the, at the Dogs with what Ciro's doing, like, it's probably the complete opposite. Nah, yeah, like, you look at a guy opposite. like uh, Milky right now, yeah, um, literally just doing all the little he's things. Com he's just Amazing. Such a competitor. Yeah. Which, you know, you have 13 of him, mm. you're not losing. Yeah. Which everyone's competitive in their, in their mm. own way. Um, but yeah, those those things that we highlight here are what make us win games. Mm. Um, yeah, Ciro actually, like if you set up Trey, he doesn't even care, right? Mm. Like he just said, yeah, good job. But then if you don't do a kick pressure, he goes, what are you doing? Yeah. Like that's what we're trying that's to do. You want to be chipped on, right? Yeah, all the time. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Which is good. Mm. Like, um, yeah. Mate, so in um, 2021, and, you know, you play, obviously playing first grade through that time, mm. got through a few games. 2021, you get called into Queensland camp. Yeah. Um, obviously, you having the Queensland spirit as you have, mate. <laughs> nah, honestly, always, always. Would have been a massive, um, massive moment for yeah. you, mate, to be in a squad amongst some great players. It was, um, yeah, it was pretty, pretty good uh, phone call. Like, even though I didn't play, just to be in and around it and know you're close was was mad. Um, probably took me took me a few days to settle in, kind of to adjust to me being there. But um, 
yeah, it was it was mad. Haven't got back there since, but you know, want to go back and play uh, one day or, or be in and around it again. Um, but yeah, it was it was unreal to be around that sort of arena. You're there with the best of the best. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. What did, did so? You did you actually did you train the first? Yeah, the, so they done the whole week. Done the done the whole week. Yeah. Um, Sort of, I wasn't knew if I was playing or not. I didn't really get told. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so you were still a, a chance. Well, what was the so what was the situation? Who was who was the nine? Like the, the so it was obviously Harry was there. Harry, yeah. I think at the time, I think that the first game that that year, I think Ben Hunt wasn't picked. Oh, okay. So, I, yeah, I wasn't sure. Um, I didn't really know. I mean, he's got other things to worry about, but mm. um, yeah, I didn't really wasn't really sure. I thought I was in the mix, definitely on the on the Sunday or on the Monday when they were doing media and stuff, mm -hmm. um, which was fine. Then I think I might've been like 19th or 20th man or something like that. Um, and then, yeah, did the whole week of training and then went back on the weekend and, and played for power. Okay. Yeah. Hey, what did you take out of the camp, mate? Like, uh, obviously there with the best, the, the best of the best in the game. Mm. Um, was there any, any moment or anything you took one person done that you're just like, wow, this is why they're there or. I think like DCE, DC, just like how he, you know, communicates to people, how he, you know, drives everyone around the field and, and just who he is as a person, like, you go, like, you, and after now being, being a captain myself, you go, holy shit, like, mm. that's a, it's pretty, pretty, um, pretty, pretty impressive, eh? Like, it's a leader. Yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, just the whole camp, like, and how passionate the old Queenslanders mm. are. Mm. Um, like how passionate they are about Queensland. It's, yeah, it makes you just want to, to just play. Yeah. Like start of the week, you're like, let's go tomorrow sort of thing. Um, yeah, they're so passionate. Like all the old boys that have done it and been there and done it, they just, they live for it. It's, it's unreal. Ingrained into you, isn't it? Yeah. Like that's what I loved about it too. Like you sort of just get there and it's just, you know, you've got the likes of Gallon and Farrah and like, it's just like pretty much you have yeah. to hate Queensland. Yeah. These would be the same. Yeah. Position, you? You know? I think that will you don't really talk. I think they, did, you know, they don't really say much about New South Wales in camp. They just oh, talk really? about themselves. Yeah, and, well. well, they yeah. did that year anyway. But um, yeah, it was mad to be around it and be part of it at that mm. time of the year. So it was good. Oh, man, I'm sure you'll get back there one day one if you day. keep playing our <laughs> yard, mate. But uh, 25th of November of that year, mate, in 2021, you make a probably one of the biggest calls in your career uh, to sign a four-year deal with a rival, an, a rival club. Probably one of Paris' biggest rivals. Yeah. Um, how did it come about, mate? Um, I, I don't know. I said it's like sort of, uh, you know, when you when you come into sort of talks with, well, that time of the year when you're off contract and everyone makes a big deal out of it and carries on and stuff like that. And, mm. um, yeah, at the time I wanted to stay at Paris, to be honest. Um, yeah, really? Well, I was just comfortable <clears throat> there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the boys were good and all that sort of thing and, I don't know, I didn't, like, there was a couple of things going around and, I don't know, I just woke up one day, I'm like, I, w I just wasn't, wasn't, um, you know, I wanted to see what else was out there, mm. sort of thing, yep. as anyone does. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I thought, like, a, a change would be good for me at the time. Um, was looking for something different, a new avenue of way of coaching and, and sort of just to challenge myself in, in that way. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know. The great godfather Gus sat me down at a nice Chinese restaurant. Mm. Um, what did you do? You remember your order? I'd love to remember. I want to ask everyone who signed at the Bulldogs, what is their order when they sat with Gus? Ah, uh, Gus just <laughs> took over the menu and just, <laughs> just picked that out of himself. <laughs> oh yeah, good. Um, but yeah, it was it was you know it was funny actually at the when we were at dinner. Um, I was a bunch of like young. Labo guys sitting at the table. <laughs> Didn't recognise at the time, but I was still sitting at the table when it when it came out that I was with Gus. Oh really? I was still sitting at the uh, having dinner. I, like, I can't believe I can't get it. Catch a break in spring here. roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just spring roll. Here's <laughs> <laughs> Gus. Um But yeah, obviously and the thing was I've been here before. Mm, yep. Um and obviously, you know, it's talking to a few people and Coming back here didn't feel foreign, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yep. Uh, you know, I knew how, what this, what this place looked like. I was obviously still quite clo like close with Viv sort of thing. And I don't know, I just sort of thought, you know, it was 
what was best for me at the end of the day. Yep. Um, I feel like you can make decisions based on other people's inputs and what they think and what's best for them. And I just sort of sat there and thought, this is about me this time. Um, and, you know, I was really motivated by what Gus was saying and um, what he wanted to do here at the place. And, yeah, I just sort of went, I'm just going to do it, which was pretty tough. Mm. I've never really been in that situation. I've just always just kept signing on at Para for years and years and years. I was there for five or six years. Um, and, you know, you don't even really think about it. And then when it hits you in the face, and you're like, well, if you've got X, Y, Z on the table, what are you going to do? And I thought, oh. and I came in here and seen people, and I thought, I'm going to go back to the dogs. And, yeah, I'm lo loving it, obviously. Last year was a bit tough, but mm. that's part of footy, isn't it? It's a roller coaster. And Yeah, we'll, we'll get into the dog stuff, but... Just quickly on that. So in 2022, though, you'd already signed. Then you make the GF for Para. Yeah. Um, I, I think you've been asked this before, but did you actually – what were you thinking there? Because then you're like, what, have I done the right thing? The, you know, oh, like, like mate, the, dogs look, the dogs aren't going great. Yeah, I think I think there was some – I don't know, I can't remember. I think that year mm. – so I signed like the year prior. Yep. Um, that year, uh, I think coach got sacked. Midway through the year. Yep. And I thought, shit, <coughs> shit, I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> here. What am I doing here? Didn't know who the coach was going to be. So I was all up in the air going, well, this is, this can't be good. Mm. Um, so like, yeah, we made the GF, we're going mad and all that. And obviously you think that, of course, I'm not going to lie about it. Of course you sit here and go, what, uh, like, what am I doing? Mm. Uh, sort of thing. You say that now, but at the time I was like, far out, like what's going on in this place is mm. <laughs> a bomb just hit the place and. <laughs> You know, everything was going smooth where it was. Why would I want to move? I mean, I already already signed the contract. I was committed to going. But, yeah, of course you go sit there and go, oh, shit. But then when Ciro signed on, still at Paro, met up with Ciro and had a chat with him. And, yeah, I was I was fine by that. But, um, yeah, obviously when you make grand <coughs> final, you go, like, mm. it's pretty hard to leave. But um, I knew deep down it was the right thing for me to do. Um, you know, when I took the emotion out of it and mm. all that sort of thing. Yep. It was the right thing for me. You'd already time. made that decision yeah. before making yeah, yeah. the and that, And I already yeah. knew before, I was like, this is the right decision. And then it always come up and go, oh, what am I doing? Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, nah, like I had my reason why and my, my purpose of what yep. I wanted to do. Mm. Um, and that's what I stuck with. And, nice. Yeah, been well, we're glad to have you, mate. But just, just fine. And I got to play with my mate here. I know, exactly right. I'm so glad One of my favourites. <laughs> <laughs> do you, obviously... Come here, make a massive impression in pre-season training. Ciro actually makes you your captain. Um, how did you – I know we've spoken about this personally, but it's a it's a big thing for you, mate, because to be a leader, it, it doesn't just happen, right? No. Nah. You know, you've probably been to the club where I think you mentioned before, you got the likes of Gutho and Mitch and yeah. they're all big, you know, big names and yeah. you've probably sometimes just been like, yeah, yeah, we'll listen to them. But now you're that guy. How did, how did, Shit, how did you feel? It's hard to – it's hard to, I wouldn't say I'm a guy that sit there and go like, you need this. Uh, mm. I just, that wasn't me. Yep. Um, yeah, it was like, obviously being named captain, it's, it's unreal. Like it's to be put in that sort of thing and the coach trusts you that, to do a job. Um, yeah, it was, it was a great moment. Um, and you know, you sit there and, you know, I think off based off that, like you learn a lot about, about yourself. Mm. Um, but then you also look at the other captains that have captained for years, Cameron Smiths and all that, you're like, hats off to you. Mm. You know what I mean? To be, yeah. the, one, be like the best player every week. Two, to just strive every way, like every way. It's it's pretty incredible. Yeah. So. Well, mate, either way, you know, like, yeah, obviously still on that wall down there, that says it, uh, you're a Bulldogs captain, mate. Yeah. So you should be super, super proud Thanks, of that, man. Yeah. Honestly. And it's kind of... <laughs> And now, now I'm not a captain. Like, I don't see myself in any uh, different way. Mm. I still see myself as a leader of the yep. of the team. Um, I just don't have to see next to my name, which, you know, I kind of, I don't mind it. Like, it's, and we got obviously Critter there, who's mm. um, probably the next step in his career was to be a leader, like a mm. captain. Yep. Come from three premierships, uh, Samara and that. And I was like, yeah, bro, you deserve it. It was yeah, sweet. Really. And I'm happy to sit behind him and do my thing. And he does his thing, which is, which is good. It's Beautiful. Mad. All right, mate. So we just got some um, rapid fire questions. This will be interesting. They're, they're not, they're not uh, anything bad. Oh, there's okay. a couple. 
So the there's a bit of a debate around it at the moment. You know, yep. you're a bit of a niggler, which is great. I love it. But I want to know who's your biggest influence. Was it me or Michael Ennis? Well, I didn't play with Michael. Mm. So <laughs> Michael. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I obviously played with you last year, Roomies. Yes. Uh, yeah, Bad def- influence. Nah, not at all. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that at all. <laughs> oh. They're two leading hands. You know. Yes. yes. Uh, I'd have to say you. Okay, thank you. It was actually pretty funny. I was so glad. I was so glad <laughs> you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you rather be stuck on a desert island with... Hethro or Seyfarth? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard some like Hoffy, obviously, his mates with Hethro. Mm. Oh, not Hethro. Seyfarth. Seyfarth he yeah. seems pretty switched on. Mm. So I go Seyfarth. Yeah. Hethro, I'd probably end up dead. Yeah. So I wouldn't I make it back. I don't know Hethro either, but I know Seyfarth and when he's off the field. He's sweet. He's yeah, normal. I met him a few times. When he's on, he's like, so up, like, yeah, you know, Dave Clements to me the Is other the day. the redness goes, coming He's like him. you. He goes, on the field, he goes, I, I wouldn't even look at you. He goes, but off it, he goes, you're all right. So, so, so far. Yeah. Okay. Um, who on the team would you most likely to see on Love Island? Ooh. You know, I actually got asked to go on there. Who? Love Island. You did? Yeah. You got asked to they go asked, on? They messaged me. Oh. I said my. yes. So what are you going on? <laughs> No, no. Oh, hey. No I'm excited. No then. way. <laughs> Who? Oh. I'd have to view my mate Toby Sexton. He's looking for love. He, he is. Yeah, he is. He would. He he, is. he loves love. He, he loves does. Love? Yeah. I love love too. I mean, yeah, I do too, but he's. He's ready. He loves love, yeah. Okay. How's he's he going? Ready. Like, is Sydney, is, is Sydney Sider now from the Goldies? Oh. And... You, you've heard the rumors when he first moved here, didn't you? Oh, no. Yeah. Like, yeah. He's ready for that. Oh, all right. Oh, actually, this is from me. This is a. When did the cauliflower ears start? Oh, years and years. Probably my second year of first grade, I reckon. So I used to wear headgear in 20s, and then one day I was cook as a dog, and I was wearing the headgear sun, and I just took it off. And I thought, oh, this is mad. I actually breathe in this thing. <laughs> so I just didn't wear it for a few years, and then I started playing grade, and my ear just started getting sore and sore. And then someday, like, playing for some of the times I'd, I'd finish the game, it'd be inside out. It was... And then I thought, like, oh, there's got to be a resolution to this. So I just started wearing headgear. And then that's it. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. because I just always look at it and go, that's got to be painful. But you say they're not. No, it's it's um, it's um, as hard as a rock. I don't even feel like people can't even feel it. It's sweet. As it stays where it <laughs> gets a bit sore. Them, but, for some reason. Huh? <laughs> I just want to bite them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, actually, I heard you're a surfy now. You're part of a... um. A, a surf- surfy group. <laughs> What's a surfy group? A surfy. You get, do you go down to Cronulla and surf? Oh, I do. Yeah. I do. I do. <laughs> we I heard do this surf. from um, a couple of people that have been on the podcast that you're probably like the leader. Like you pick the spot. You say, boys, we're meeting right here. That's a John Doyle. <laughs> That's a John Doyle. <laughs> <laughs> but how's it going? Because you, like you sort of come from Queensland and then moved no, to I, I surfed a little bit when I was a kid. Or not kid, oh, when I was younger. Okay. Funny case and that. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm the best, the world's best, but, but you're the we leader? have fun. Yeah. Oh, I get the boys around it. <laughs> I, do, I don't mind a surf. It's just too cold now. <sighs> oh. Need a wetsuit. Yeah, I'm definitely not a surfer. So, mate, you, the fans, um, they obviously, they call you the true bulldog, um, but this is being serious. they like, I'm not laughing. I, I think he's laughing. No, this is actually a rap. Like, it's just... Um, from who? Th- they say, no, it's like literally like on the socials and stuff, they literally True. say that you're a... <laughs> I'm trying to give you a rap here. Thanks. But no, they, they, they say that, you know, you live in the, the blue and white emblem. Um, have you found it easy to sort of fit into the, the Belmore Bulldog culture? Yeah, I found it like sort of going back to when I signed here, there was sort of everything sort of lined up for me and how we play and how I play sort of was sort of mm. perfect match. So that's yeah, pretty cool to hear that. But yeah, I guess... I don't know, I'm just passionate and I want to win and it comes out in games and, um, you know, you, you get it, you get the, let, sometimes the emotion gets over here and mm. it's just how I play my footy. I just want to win and I'm passionate and, um, yeah, it's good that the fans get in behind me. It's, it's mad. Yeah. No, they do love you, mate. I'm, I'm being serious here. I'm trying <laughs> to give you a wrap <laughs> <laughing. laughs> All right. 
All right, mate. So these are our classic questions uh, voted in from the fans. So mm. the fans that love you. Can't wait. Number one, what makes Reed happy? What makes me happy? Um, off the field, just, um, I don't know, I just, you know, I've gone to the beach, just spending time with my friends. Um, yeah, just, just hanging out, just mm -hmm. being a larrikin, <laughs> stuffing around. Um, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty easy, pretty chill, I'd say. Nice. Just all that. How does the dog's culture compare to para's culture? Um, oh, fan-wise, they're somewhat similar. Mm. Um, but like, you know, dogs are pretty crazy. I think some of the other boys that have come from other clubs think these, you're all, these are all mad. These are all mad. <laughs> which is mad. It's the best. It's so good. So keep getting us around, around us. It's sick. Oh, yeah. They're a, um, <laughs> they're good. It's good. <laughs> when you're winning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. If you had a dream beyond the NRL, what would it be? So if you weren't going to be an NRL player, do you have a dream to be anything else? Jesus, I don't know, eh? Yeah. I think that's all I've ever wanted to do, but... Mm. Uh, Anything after footy you, know, like you can think of that you, you might do after footy? Professional golfer. Have yeah. you seen me play golf lately? Beyond? I'm a freak. Really? I'm a freak. <laughs> How much are you playing? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I don't know. I think when, when footy's done, um, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, I sort of do, but I don't. Yeah. So it's an iffy answer. Maybe let me know and I'll I tell can't really give you much, I'll eh? Tell on the next potty. Yeah, on the next one. <laughs> on the next one. All right, well, mate, that's done. But there's a big moment right now, and this is huge. But um, this this has been passed down from um, generations to generations. Uh, Mick gave it to me. Um, <laughs> what is it? <laughs> it's the book of being a pest. <laughs> <laughs> and mate, I was, how long I'd have you had to, that for? A, a, a long time. <laughs> plenty of battles in there. Plenty of sledges in here, mate. So that's a, <laughs> everyone's wage. <laughs> See you, mate. Thanks, mate. Hope you take it. <laughs> <laughs>